Hey everybody, it's Nathan Cool. In this episode, I wanted to show you how to use Photoshop Actions to speed up your workflow. If there's a lot of things that you do repetitively every time you're in Photoshop, you can actually speed that up quite a bit. I'm gonna show you a couple different types of actions. One, to just use a keyboard shortcut to quickly do a couple things that you would have to go around in the menus and click around on. You can just do it with one press of a button. I'm gonna show you another one also of how to then batch process. So you can use it for a lot of things. One of the things that I do quite often is I'll have a whole bunch of pictures that are the finished product size, but I wanna resize all of them and I wanna resize them using one of uh, Photoshop's algorithms of uh, Smooth by Cubic. So so I'm going to show you how I do that also so you've got two different angles that you can see for using actions to speed things up in your workflow process. Ready? Let's take a look. Now I'm going to do this a little bit long and drawn out so you can kind of get a better picture of how I would use this in my complete workflow. I'm going to show this for doing real estate, but you can also do this for just about anything to use in Photoshop, whether it's for portraits or whatnot. So let's take just a quick example. For this particular shot that uh, I did actually on a condo just recently this last week, I took a bunch of different frames. You can see them all down here. This one here that's being shown was uh, the ambient shot. Um, this one here was a, a, a flash shot uh, that I did like. This is also a flash shot that I'm taking, that'll probably be my base, um, that doesn't have that reflection on the floor. And then I did a, uh, a couple window poles, one over here, one over there. So this was kind of a long involved one, reason being is that the sun was just beating in here real hard. And I could have maybe added some character and left some of that in there. But for this shot, I thought that, well, flash and just seeing some of the shiny hardwood floors here would be good enough. So kind of like I said, long and drawn out, show you what I would do. Now I've already done my standard adjustments here, but what I would normally do is be selecting all these files, right click, and then I would say edit in uh, layers, open as layers in Photoshop. Now this is going to open up and this is then where I really need to have Photoshop do some automation for me. So Photoshop first thing it's doing, you've seen this on other videos and you probably do this yourself quite a bit if you're working back and forth between Lightroom and Photoshop, is letting Photoshop go ahead and load all these layers. You can see it's loading them up all just fine. Now one of the things I'm going to do, and you've probably seen in other videos, is as soon as all these are loaded, I like to go ahead and use auto align on all of these pictures. So that's an action that I already have. So when these come up, all that I'd have to do now that they're all loaded is I'm going to press the F2 key and automatically all these are starting to align. Now how did that actually happen? That was from an action that I made earlier. What I'm going to do is show you how then to make an action like that, but in this case we're going to make it more interesting. One of the things I'd like to be able to do is add a layer mask onto my different pictures here. So if I say, okay, I'm going to add a, a layer mask onto this one, uh, how would I do that? I could go up here to the layer, uh, to the, the, the menu, I could go layer, layer mask, and then hide all and whatnot, but I could do something much similar uh, and, and faster using an action. So I've already got the action window open over here. Um, and you can see I've got different uh, actions uh, already saved, like auto align layers and my resize by cubic is up here. Um, what I'm gonna do though is uh, create a new type of set to put these actions in. Now, if you don't see this window, go up to your window menu and look for actions. That's Alt F9. Now that'll bring that window up. You can detach it if you want to. You can land it anywhere. It might put it in into one of these sidebars or whatnot. But you just look for that actions window and that's what you want to do. So the, what I want to do next is there's all these different buttons down here. I can make a completely new set of, of what, uh, what I'd like to have. So let's, let's go ahead and create a new set, a completely new set. And we'll call this just a uh, Toot one for um, the stuff that we're going to be using today. So you can see here's toot one down here. Now, I want to create a new action. This action is going to be for adding a layer mask to hide everything so I can do it very quickly. So uh, over here, this one is to create a new action. So I'm going to go ahead and just click on that and say create new action. And we're going to call this uh, add mask hide. It's going to be in the set to one, and I'm going to add the function key, let's say um, F3 to that one. And uh, you can also select a color to it so you can see it in the actions. But at this point, I'm ready to go. So I'm just going to go ahead and click record. And now it's going to start recording the different actions that, I'm, that I would normally do. So I would say I'd go uh, layer, and I'd say layer mask, and I'd say hide all. 
Great. Now I can just stop recording with this little button over here. Boop. Done. Now my action is made. Let's delete that layer mask. Okay. So now I can do a couple things. One, I can bring up my actions menu here and I can say under toot one, I want to say add layer mask. So I could just go ahead and click on that on layer mask. I could say play with the little play button down here and sure enough, it had added a layer mask. Let me delete that again. So now what I can do is since we assigned it to the F3 key, I can just press F3. Boom. So I can keep going then to each one of these layers and say F3, F3, F3. And I've got layer masks on all of them to be able to do what I'd like to be able to do. So that, that helps speed things up quite a bit on what I would need to do for that. Now there's, there's more though that we could uh, do and we could say, you know what, I'd like to make another action that does some automatic brightening, or I'd like to make another action that uh, does a whole series of things, changes this one to luminance. Whatever you want to do in your standard workflow, you can automate that by making that simple action. But there's more to it. Let's just go ahead and close this guy out. And let's just get out of Photoshop here for a second. And let me take you over to a few images that I have here from this particular shoot. These are just simple pictures taken from a simple condo that I did. Um, but we're going to just use these pictures as an example. Now they're very big. If you take a look at the size up here, they're like eight megabytes or, you know, almost 6,000 pixels wide. These are the originals that would be used for printing, but obviously not for MLS. So I have another action that I use that when I'm all completely done, it'll take a directory and resize all these images automatically for me. So let's go back over here and in this directory where I am, I'm going to go ahead and say, I'm going to add just a new folder in here and I'm going to call it MLS and that'll be for my MLS size images. And now I know where those are going to go. Now what I can do is open up any of these images in Photoshop and that's where I want to start. So let me go just get out of here for a second. Let me drag one of these images over here. And this is just to make our action. This is only a one time thing. So I've got this image in here. Now let's go ahead and say, okay, let's make that action and let's call it resize 2D. And now we're going to start recording. Now this is very simple. All I have to do, say record, then I'm going to go image resize. I'm going to use the bicubic smooth gradients. This I found to be very good for resizing down to smaller sizes. I'm going to resize this down to 1500 pixels wide, which seems to work on the MLS in my area very well. And I'm going to click OK. Now I want to save as. So I'm going to go file, save as. I'm going to select that MLS directory and I'm going to keep the same name that this file came up with. So we can see it's actually got a JPEG, JPEG extension because I had renamed it, but that's fine. So we'll just go ahead and save it and that's done. Okay. And now we can go ahead and close that out as well. And now we can stop the recording. Now what I can do is I can batch process all of those pictures. So let's start from fresh. Now the MLS resized by cubic, sure enough, it made a smaller picture. It's only 1500 pixels wide, but I'm going to get out of here and I'm going to start fresh. I'm going to go ahead and delete that MLS directory. So now I've just got these three pictures. So now let's go and automate the whole process. Let's say I've got 25, 30 pictures already done. I'd go to file, automate, batch. Now what I can do is it's the last one that actually came up here. I'd select my set, which is toot one. I'd select the action, which is resize 2D. I would then select the folder that I'm going to choose from. So let's go ahead and get out of here and go to my tutorials, actions, and we have those in this folder here. Now I can say how I want to save them. I've got this override action save as checkbox checked. And the format of my image is going to say document size, excuse me, document name. I have this underscore MLS size. That's just something I put in. You could do anything. You could just do MLS toots. And you can see it's changing that. And then the last part portion of the file name would then be the extension. It shows you the example right here of what it would look like. So let's go ahead and choose then the export folder. And I'm going to go out to the tutorials export and I'm going to make a new for folder and called MLS's like that so we know it is completely different. So I'm going to go ahead and select that, 
Now that that is done, all I have to do is click OK and watch the magic happen. One, two, three, it brought them all in and I'm done. So now I can go back to this folder, MLSs, and I can see that I've got three files that have been resized. There they are. You see it's only 1500 pixels wide, 1500 pixels wide, 1500 pixels wide, and that was done with just a simple action. Quick and easy. So that's Photoshop Actions in a nutshell. If you have anything that you need to automate and you do a lot of keystrokes for a lot of different things, you could probably make a lot of actions to make that simpler. And I always found too that Resize by Cubic to just be a lifesaver. I export everything almost always out of uh, Lightroom as I'm working back and forth from doing real estate. But a lot of times, especially when I'm doing portrait work or product work, you've probably seen other videos where I don't necessarily trust Lightroom because of the debayering algorithm that uh, kind of messes this things up it's because of the OEM you can see a video on that one of my prior ones called uh, Lightroom's dirty little secret but I digress on exporting a lot of the pictures out I need to resize those I need to get them smaller well I, I don't want to bring every single one in resize save as I just load it up in batch and boom about 20 seconds later all my pictures are there ready to go I can zip them up and send them out to the client but more so too like my auto align or you need to add masks or you know just about anything imaginable you can make actions to make that happen to even automate the process even better in Lightroom you can make presets and on the next episode I'm going to show you how I make presets in Lightroom and some of the more favored ones that I use in my real estate workflow. Well that's it for now. If you did like this video you can subscribe to this YouTube channel and as soon as one of these videos is posted you'll be the first to know. Thanks a lot for watching. Until next time get out there and shoot something. Talk to you later. Bye.